Good morning, everybody, and welcome to my channel, The Gentleman Reviewer. As always, please hit that subscribe button and continue to help my channel grow. And give me a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing so far. I would greatly appreciate that. So I'm going to go a little bit out on a limb here and review the Jin Hao X450. Last time I reviewed a Jin Hao, some people commented that, like, why would I spend my time or waste my time reviewing such a cheap pen, something that, you know, people tend to use as throw-around pens. And, I mean, my answer to that is... One of my goals on this blog is to review things that, you know, people at the very entry level would be using, people maybe on a budget. Uh, personally, I've got a one-year-old running around, and I really can't justify spending sometimes even as much as $60 on a pen when you've got fountain pens that are upwards of five, $600, or even some of the better, like the nicer expert, not expert, but... Uh, premium fountain pens usually start around 150 I mean the Lamy 2000 you can usually find it for about 160 100 dollars if you're looking at sales the vanishing point 140 to 200 dollars somewhere in there depending on where you buy it from and what sales and that's quite a bit to spend on a pen um, you know for anybody and I just feel like you know I want to cater to the common person the common person who would be looking at getting into fountain pens or just someone who, you know, wants to have one as a hobby and just, you know, start out with maybe it's all they can afford at the time. And, you know, I want to respect that and spend my time reviewing things that they would use too. And if I ever get my hands on a nice one, you know, I'll definitely review that as well. So that's, the, that's one of the main reasons that I try to stick with some budget stuff as well. Um... But yeah, let's dive into the Jin Hao X450. So it's one of the cheapest fountain pens that you can find today. It's pretty common that you'll find it in any entry-level person's or pretty much anyone's repertoire. It's a good pen to have in your pocket, a good pen. I personally use it to test quite a few inks because if I get some gunk buildup or, you know, if I ruin it, you know, because right now I've got the Noodler's Black Swan in it. Before that I had the... Uh, I think it was the Deatramentis document, Violet. And, you know, if they react together and if I didn't clean it out super great and then there's a problem, you know, I'm only out a couple bucks rather than 150 So it's great for figuring that stuff out. If it if, if the ink dies, the, the parts, you know, so what? It's only a couple bucks. So you're going to be able to find this for about $8 on Amazon. You're going to be able to get a set of four from Gulor or Jin Hao for about $20 on Amazon. Goulet Pens has three different colors, each for just slightly under $10. You'll be paying a bit extra on Goulet for one, um, but you're also gonna get some high quality customer service from them. So let's dive into this pen. So right off the bat, one thing I didn't like about it was actually the nib size. So let's get a nice shot on the nib. So one way that you can tell a fake Jin Hao from a real one is the nib. So you see that it says Jin Hao 18 karat gold plated. It's not actually gold plated, it's probably just painted on. But um, on a fake one, you'll probably just see a cursive Jin Hao running or, or vertical to the nib. And then with these ones, you usually have a design running around the side like that. Looks like the top of the Chinese uh, wall, if that's the Great Wall of China. Um, but this one has a horse-drawn carriage on it. It says Jin Hao, and then I already mentioned the 18 gold, 18 karat gold plated. So that's one way that you can tell a real Jin Hao from a fake one. So moving up. So, oh, one thing that I forgot to mention. So this is a medium nib. When I bought it, the company that I bought it from said that it was an extra fine nib. And I tend to stick between the fine, extra fine. Maybe I'll go into a medium but I, those just tend to write too big for my style of writing. I write very small. Um, so I was hoping to get an extra fine uh, because I like Pilot Metropolitan's extra fine nib, <clears throat> and or maybe it's a fine nib. I think it's a fine on my Pilot Metropolitan, but I really like it. Um, so I was kind of disappointed to find that out. So it is only available in medium, but while I've got it closed, the clip on the cap is, it's okay. I mean, it's probably just stamped metal. It's fairly solid near the bottom but as it moves up you can see the metal gets thinner and thinner like i said it's probably just stamped and placed on there um but it'll do the job i mean it does the job well you've got gold hardware or gold accents across the whole pen 
Um, and then you've got Jin Hao in cursive right there. So now we reach the grip, a point that some people like, a lot of people don't. So you can see it's got grooves built into it. Um, and that's going to help you if you have the standard tripod grip. Um, so it's, if you don't, so I tend to hold my pens like this, um, but I still keep my finger on one of the grooves and then my uh, middle finger sometimes rests across the bottom like it's supposed to, but I bring my thumb over. So it still works, but if you have the standard pi tripod grip, it's gonna work the best, kind of like that Lamy Safari. Um, the gentleman stationer didn't like it as much. He said that he has the normal grip, normal tripod grip, but you know, whatever. So it's made of resin. It actually feels a bit like rubber, um, but if it's made of resin, it's gonna hold up over time. So it comes with standard, a international cartridge converter. Um, so you can use bottled ink right off the bat, which is great. I really like that when um, pen companies do that because you know, I don't like cartridges. I have a ton of them, but I really don't like them. Um, I just feel like they dry out too quickly. They don't hold as much ink. Maybe they hold more. I really don't know. Um, I just don't like them as much. The fun thing about fountain pens is you get to use bottled ink, and I really like that a lot. So given how large that cavity is in there, you can use standard inter international long and short cartridges, which is nice. And you've got a pen with quite a bit of variety. So the body of the pen is lacquer coated. Um, it's probably brass. So you've got a pretty good hefty pen right here. Um, let me find my notes for how much it weighs. So it comes in at 42 grams or an ounce and a half if you're American, which is pretty hefty. So I have a strong preference for uh, weighty pens. I like when they have um, some weight in my hand as I'm writing. I just It's just a personal preference of mine. Some people really like them shorter. I really don't. Um, so if you like that, you'll definitely like this on this pen. So just some other specs. It comes in at 5.6 inches or 14.1 centimeters while closed. So it is postable, but as you see, the cap did not go very far down the pen's body at all. So posted, and the, again, the cap's pretty weighty. It's, br it's probably brass, but it's at least metal that's lacquer coated. So it's pretty weighty. Um, so you're gonna be fighting that and it actually comes off pretty easy if you don't post it on there quickly, um, or tightly, I meant to say. So it comes in at 6.3 inches or 16 centimeters while posted, and just writing like this, unposted is 4.9 inches or 12.4 centimeters, which is about pretty standard. You usually get about the five inch mark. So one complaint that some people have had, which I don't notice, and you see I'm shaking it, but you probably can't hear anything. So it's just a friction fit cap. It doesn't have a great seal. So if you leave it without writing for a couple of days, it's going to dry out your ink. Um, but you get a nice satisfying click when you close it. Um, Gentleman Stationer mentioned in his review that um, his rattles around when it's closed. Mine doesn't seem to do that. So you'll get some quality control issues probably you know, over time. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention, the converter holds one point oh five milliliters of ink which feels like a ton to me it lasts for a long time and it's super easy to fill so let me do a quick writing sample for you since i just filled it with um one of my next ink reviews my next one's going to be the lemur lime but let's do this so i had to remember which ones were the t <laughs> Which one is this one? This one's Black Swan. You know, I'm kind of, this is like a reddish black. It's a lot more red, um, but I'll review that at some point. So this ink actually, I actually used um, the same pens for right here. So the Document Violet seems to be a much wetter ink while the uh, Black Swan seems to be a little bit less wet. I don't know what to say. It's a little bit drier writing, so it wasn't as thick. But I mean, it writes pretty well. The nib itself is just steel. And like I said, it's a medium. Ooh, I got some stuff on my journal. I'll have to clean that up later. So like I said, it's a medium. It's just steel. Nothing fancy about it. You can actually switch this out with any standard number six um, nib. So you can buy one for 15 bucks off of Goulet pens. I haven't tried this with the Joe nibs, 
but um, I just tend to keep things stock. I'm not a big fan on upgrading things for some reason, but that's gonna give you a much better riding experience. They're just friction fit in, so you can just pull it out. The first time you do it, it's gonna be pretty difficult. Um, future times, that's gonna get a little bit easier and easier. So overall, I mean, for six bucks, six to 10 bucks, you really can't you know, go wrong with this pen. I think it's one of the better entry-level fountain pens across the board. And I think it's, I mean, you're gonna get better quality with like a Pilot Metropolitan, a Lamy Safari, you're also gonna spend a little bit more. So if you're on a really tight budget, um, you know, I think it's a really good intro fountain pen. Um, you're gonna have some problems with it. The lacquer can chip, get scratched. Mine hasn't seemed to do that yet. Um, but overall, you know, it's it's not bad. You can, if you feel like upgrading, you can switch out the nibs. The writing experience as is, is decent. It tends to flow with whatever ink I've stuck in it pretty decently. So thanks again for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the review. Please comment below if you have any questions or feedback. And as always, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.